That was fun. We should be back online, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. <laughs> Yes, we are. <laughs> I thought they were done. That is something I forgot to mention in the pre pre super shows. Charter and AT&T are having it out right now. Okay. Because fiber is encroaching. And they are doing work splicing. So if oh, we my return video, video is just myself. Is that supposed to be? <laughs> Uh, no. Okay. Do, <laughs> do you like it? <laughs> Aww. I am a bit of a narcissist, I so... I'm just saying, man. I mean, I can... Okay. Uh, <laughs> but it would be helpful to know when, you know, things are yes. happening. <laughs> <laughs> I just see Pedro as well. <laughs> there it is. Yay. <laughs> I fired up the black magic. Genuinely, I did. I... <laughs> Initialize mm. the Black Magic Deck Link preview output. Hey everyone, that was a good show. All right, if you missed it, <laughs> um... <laughs> I was in the there middle was of asking there Steve was fire. a life-changing, super important question, and I forgot, to... forgot about it. Yes. Uh, oh, hello, down incognito. <laughs> oh no. Let's see. Fortunately, that doesn't no longer takes down the entire system with the bandwidth blinks. That used to be a thing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Look at the bright side. We all had a chance to get up and make some tea. Because that was roughly yes. three <laughs> minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I was hopeful. <laughs> I... That was 100% on me for everyone. I should have mentioned that because I did that earlier today. Okay. To <laughs> I went out and about because I saw this splicing truck like less than a kilometer from two kilometers that's moved in. And I went and did that on the side. That dude was surprised. I'm like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some fiber. No, I was genuinely like, I understand how fate works and how reality works. And if the internet's going to be going down, it'll probably be around 3 p.m., right? Oh. <laughs> so we're going to pull these two things out. And so that was like 2.15. Oh, okay. It's going to be three to five minutes. So there, there's the warning I should have given everyone. <laughs> I didn't yeah, expect that was a, a three long. to five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so if that happens again, we will be back. Okay. Get up, make a cup of tea. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I put some more extra tea pins while I was waiting to basically line everything up. Because mm. now that they've been up for a while, they've started to droop. <laughs> the advanced strat I found... Hang on, tablet. Will you reconnect? Yay. No. Oh. <laughs> is kind of like get one. Because if you do the dead center, you get the droop. Yeah. <laughs> so if you do the center and the top, because the bottom gravity takes care of it. Gravitons take care of it. Yeah. So I put one on the top of this and one on the top of this. <laughs> and now the holes are hidden. <laughs> Yeah, Frontier's going down, baby. Mm hmm. Yeah. I don't think that surprised anyone, though. <laughs> yeah, because they, they took over from Verizon. Uh, yeah. Then got taken over by ATT. Right, now is my turn <laughs> to uh, get up and, uh, well, pee first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it takes all the fun out of it. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, out there in what frontier? Yeah, frontier is what our Verizon Fios optical used to be. Um, it's still pretty much the way Verizon used to run it. It's just now called Frontier, but that's probably going to change again soon, too. <laughs> As they do. What is Spectrium? Spectrum. That's the cable. The local cable. Oh, the local cable. Okay. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I think I would have caught the memo if AT&T bought Charter. Charter's rebranded <laughs> to Spectrum. Spectarium. That's an interesting one. If you have mm -hmm. access to AT&T Fiber, do yourself a favor and check and see if you can get Toast.net. Because then you can get it without the cable modem rental fees. No overages. Unlimited. No caps. Can you tell I've been researching? Um, I think they might be available in California, too. Yes. Um, their fiber service is not available here because we have our other fiber services. But they, it, it is inland. It's just where I'm at. It's uh, only Frontier. Um... I did look into that, yeah, toast but I get a great enough. service with Frontier, so I'm not complaining, other than it being very expensive. You um, might not be. Mm -hmm. Soon. Mm -hmm. So you have Frontier right now? Yeah. Oh. Oh, no. What are your options if they do go kaput and just cut it off? Oh, no, no, no. There, we have other fiber services here, Independence. That, that's what I just um, asked. What are your other yeah. options um, if Frontier goes down? Frontier will most likely be just taken over by an, an, the other ones. Because the, <laughs> the other ones just piggyback off Frontier. So, um, and I'm forgetting the name of uh, the one the businesses use, the local... The local businesses have have their own. It's um, it's what always happens. <laughs> yeah, Mira. What do you think? You're running on frontier. I mean, who originally laid the glass? Verizon. Verizon mm -hmm. did. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Hello, so uh, uh, <laughs> nice try, <laughs> Smod. <laughs> See, the unique thing about then here, AT and T is AT and T um, is is uh, DSL. Or fiber, but most of it's DSL. So, you know, they they, they trick people that way. They're a nasty company. <laughs> so, um, well, most of AT and T's footprint. I mean, outside of rural areas, VDSL two, which is not fiber, but yeah, um, where they do that's true. Fiber. But AT and T's mm -hmm. doing a massive rollout. Yeah, I know they are because <laughs> the government threatened them. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing that gets those critters to move. What? <laughs> We're quite happy screwing. We want you to continue paying $70 a month for six megabits down. It's great for us. <laughs> no, the TV's tuned in. That's the way I like to think about it, man. They don't have an option. The TV just picks it up. <laughs> well, I guess that's what I'll watch. <laughs> I guess we're doing this again. All right. Yes. <laughs> Shay and Linda. Yay. I love their pictures. TV pictures once again. Really? Give me another game Stay and you spend Willie. hours upon hours in. Uh, Hades. I, oh, I saw um, Dodger playing. What, is that what she's playing right now? I think that was it. That looked kind of interesting. Um... Oh, it's the new um, early access from um, Bastion. Yeah. People. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was it. 
That looked kind of interesting. <laughs> I'm playing Witcher 2. Oh, cool. I haven't been playing much of anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you just get, uh, well, getting Well, I've been back. playing with <laughs> El Chipo and the uh, Steam Box. Mm -hmm. But yeah. <laughs> Basically, getting very video game capable machines going. But yeah, no. Not much yeah. of the video game play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those. How often do you use the, either of those devices for gaming? The um, the Steam Box has been out of commission because I used the bulk of it for Nori's PC at the time. Mm -hmm. So I've been slowly reclaiming stuff back as I bought her better stuff. And, well, as soon as the power uh, thing arrives, it's going to go back uh, plugged into the TV. And it might be the thing that I come home and I sit down and play around a little bit because it's just dedicated thing el cheapo doesn't play games all that much runs a lot of benchmarks but doesn't you might, really you play might, games might, 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 you, you gotta rework it might be the thing we, we gotta work on that a little bit or we're never gonna convince nori of this lie um yeah <laughs> 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 <Working the delivery. laughs> oh man but yeah no she wants she also wants like something that she can just sit at the TV, hit a button, grab a controller, and just play. Uh -huh. So that's what the Steam Machine, um, the Steam Box 360 is going to do. Thank Yay. you very much, Arthur. Um, the, yeah, El Chipo is just my foots around PC, and that's what it does. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I basically break the install of uh, Neon that's on there. Whenever I want to do something here, it's like, oh, yeah. That's like a prototype of this. Oh, it broke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, I have the next challenge for you after you're done with Steam Bucks, though. Okay. <laughs> you know what? You know what building ships and bottles? Old hat, man. Old oh, hat. that's cool. <laughs> We could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to be watertight by the time I'm done? Yes, you have to yes. do it with like tweezers, like they do with the boats, and push them in and pull them back. We out. could do. I'm gonna need. Could... Uh, yeah, the 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 nozzle's not wide enough to fit a motherboard in. <laughs> I have a friend who's building one of the fish tank PCs. <laughs> he's making his own. That that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's all the fun. rage. You, you'd, you'd have a glass panel, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> that is very clearly plastic. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. We could get a glass one. An old arrowhead glass one. But actually one. having it on a water cooler just completely sealed off. Filled mm. with yeah. um, mineral oil. Mineral oil? <laughs> If you're going to go through that much trouble, let's get like some fluorine. <laughs> Let, let's spend a thousand dollars on liquid for a three hundred dollar um, budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I that already will have the motherboard. Evaporate oh. if you have the smallest crack in your loop. Ask me how yep. I know. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Exalty found the new Pedro emote from Twitch. Yay, Exalty! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed that uh, yesterday while I was streaming. It's like, oh, that's my yeah. oh, nice. <laughs> that's a just in case, man. You know, so we needed something to remember Pedro by. And if the plane didn't make it back or he couldn't come oh. back, then... <laughs> so now, now it's just too much, Pedro. <laughs> that was just another boost to my ego. <laughs> Genuinely took three weeks for that. To go through. Yeah, to go through. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like I said yesterday on Twitter, the um, rumors of my death uh, were yes. greatly appreciated. <laughs> I mean, exaggerated. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Salty. It's good to see a Canadian that likes sweat. Can you imagine Jordan in a sweater? 
Oh no, no way. <laughs> the dude lives no. in Toronto. It's not exactly yeah. <laughs> warm. Never seen the boy in a sweater. No. We're also uh -uh. about to find out whether or not he's listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. A shirt with rolled up sleeves like I am right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of listening, I just cut out the audio-only stream. I forgot to do that. And I need to get our pre-pre, uh, not pre, um, uncut thing. I gotta get used to recording a couple of new things. Okay. That's together. That was, we were all totally not just buying time to see if this thing blinked again before we got started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And she was playing with her phone already. No, I just tweeted out, so now that we're stable. <laughs> Always playing with the phone. I, 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 I can't put it down for a minute. <laughs> Come on, man. Come back to me. Okay, then. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm doing LGC business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you took a break from the phone long enough to let me know. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be talking about phones, though. Uh, yes. <laughs> I can honestly say I do not have a uh, smartphone. Don't ask me how many tablets I have, but I don't have a smartphone. Hmm. Three of my tablets have LTE modems on. Um, yeah, that's sims. always convenient. I have two smartphones. How many do you have in the One house? for work how and one with two house? sims. <laughs> how many do you have that are capable of making calls? I have four <laughs> that are capable Those of two. making calls. Yes. <laughs> they make calls. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get a lot of calls on them. I don't make a lot of calls. <laughs> That's always interesting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Especially when, uh, you know, my uh, work phone rings and it's like 6 p.m. It's like, uh, no. Mm. <laughs> I'm sure I have a graveyard of messages on Google Voice that <laughs> never... I don't know how long they keep either. Mm. Mm. Right, so I mean, it works, sure. If someone calls me, I'll pick up the phone because IT support. Yeah. But... Mm. <laughs> No, I've done my time. <laughs> Pedro doesn't For have the reel to reel set up. Anyway. <laughs> have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> <laughs> no, my voicemails uh, is just uh, if you like, if you need IT support, please send an email to. Mm. <laughs> cool. What, what, if, what if I call your vice mail? Which kind of ice are we talking? Miami. Like the one you strap onto a table nope. to hold uh, things? Miami. Or nope. uh, uh, white, the Miami white, Vice? White sports jackets <laughs> with cocaine. Yeah, boats. turquoise yep, and Miami pink vice it is. triangles. <laughs> Speed boats. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind vice mail, actually. <laughs> All I ever get is voicemail. <laughs> Or feel free to use our contact <laughs> form, then get angry at me like three weeks later. You're like, you never <laughs> sent my comment. Where did you send it? <laughs> Guess what? There's only one correct answer to that question. And feel free to email me at venetlinuxteamcast.com and I'll never see it because that email <laughs> operates on a whitelist only. All right, bad boy slot. What? <laughs> oh, man. All right, we had a whole different thing going there, bro. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the musical was it on ice? Oh god, really? Was kind of curious. I'm like, yeah. All right. Bad boys on ice. Bad boys with Will Smith. On ice. Yeah. <laughs> the reports about cats have hit me so hard. I'm going to end up watching that when that comes to uh, yes stream. <laughs> Yeah, same here. <laughs> that genuinely looks like... 
Not Honestly, really. I think I think <laughs> I'll probably like it because it's psychedelic. I I, I like it when movies are like that. <laughs> There's one movie person that I follow. That's uh, Movie Bob, and he was saying, "Yeah, it's very sexy, very weird, uh. very out there, and very sexy." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you realize this now, Artharin? <laughs> no one's that happy sober. <laughs> <laughs> hey, someone got a pine book. Nice going. <laughs> nice going, Justin. <laughs> nice, Justin. Good to see you. Those are awesome. And then... Mm -hmm. I That's the problem. The only problem with the pine book. This is neat. Shelf. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I have like 10 x86 laptops on a shelf. <laughs> 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 Oh, we gotta have a talk about these. Gloves. Are those the uh, touch-enabled ones? All touch-enabled, baby. This, uh, yeah. <laughs> this, this yeah. is like a capacitive fist condom. <laughs> all up and down the sides, all the fingers and all that. Would you immediately nice. remember it has that ability as soon as you do this? Yep. yep. <laughs> you just hover the fingers like, hello. <laughs> I always, it, so many years of having to take the gloves off to do anything. And these are yeah. easy too. <laughs> I thought this last year. I brought them out to use them. I'm like, I paid too much not to use you and just put it on touch some stuff. <laughs> and put them back out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I bought Nori um, drawing gloves, the ones that live, uh, go like halfway up the finger. So it's perfect because she could keep using her phone and touch the thing. <laughs> oh, some finger, I have some black leather ones like that, some dice gloves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but those are like a very tight around the wrist, very constricting. <laughs> Do they come with a little whip? They're supposed to be for drawing, <laughs> to prevent carpal tunnel. Naughty finger. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, Scoots! It's Wednesday. <laughs> Hello, Scott. <laughs> Get ready to go. T minus one minute. Everything's up. Pedro's bandwidth is having a little bit of a hiccup, but I'm sure that's just watching something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's Wednesday and there's nothing else I can close without interfering with my ability to do the show. <laughs> you okay, Jill? Yeah. I just I had a sneezing fit, sorry. Ah. <laughs> Like this story. Yeah, I. Hey, uh... let's do a show. <clears throat> One, two, three, that's armed. Let's get the yacht rock at the appropriate level. Groovy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yay! Scale first. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I'm not aligning things because I'm an aligny desk person. I'm just trying to make sure they don't get knocked over while I'm doing the job. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm clearing the swaft between here and here. Yes. Hey.
Let's get some Pedros. Mm-hmm. Hey. Pedro. <laughs> there's, there's Pedro's what did I do? Chat. Yes, there are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Element. Oh, I guess chat's not appearing. No. <laughs> Let's see. That's the alerts box. Oh, maybe it did the thing. Where is chat? Stream elements chat. <laughs> or maybe the bridge is in. Somebody type something on Twitch. <clears throat> I mean, uh, Sorceress, what she said earlier, appeared, so... War chat. Maybe stream elements is done. Okay. Hmm. Boop. Yeah, I just booped it too. <laughs> but, uh... Hmm. <laughs> Nothing we can do about it. We can still read it though. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The uh, followers are also not showing up. Yeah. Womp womp. Oh well. <laughs> Close your eyes and pretend, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, Hello. relax, take that midweek break, talk about men just in time, right? Uh, hi, chat. Yep. <laughs> We're just talking about that man. Diff technical difficulties on Wednesdays, but we know that's yes. how it goes for not just us, probably you, but <laughs> let's talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source. I'm Ben Stone, that's Joe Bryant, and we got a new Pedro. Hello. Yeah, Pedro's <laughs> not dead. He's mostly <laughs> the same. Um, still getting some bugs. Uh, you did a fantastic job with the reinforcement learning. You got to train the AI when you get it in. And... Um, <laughs> Did, did a fantastic job on the Morrowind. Oh, yes. <laughs> I did a job on the Morrowind. It was all right. Uh, I mean, it, not quite as cheesy as the last model, but uh, it'll get there. It'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll catch my stride at some point. <laughs> it'll be a beautiful thing. Um. So, oh, a couple of notes before we get going. Uh, this will be... Did a little test last week and I did it with Saturday and we'll be like, yeah, this is great. If uh, you want like the uncut version of the show, you know, we do a live and uncut version, which you can get directly on Twitch or for Patreons, uh, it'll be like a week early on YouTube. We're also going to roll that out into a podcast form that you can do with your Patreon thing because you get a custom RSS feed that you can plug into your, or um, you can just download it directly. So that'll be audio only and that'll make some people happy. And <laughs> long as it, long as I remember yeah. to do it. This is the big thing because I'm still kind of testing the system I have set up to get the audio recorded separately from everything else. So it'll end up recording like five hours worth of stuff and having to dig it out. It'll be kind of brilliant. That's what I'm up to. Also, everyone buy capacitive gloves and forget that you have them and never use them. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. So what's new with you? Oh, so I had a great time yesterday on Jupiter Broadcasting's Linux Unplugged. Actually, Chris Fisher recorded two episodes because they weren't going to be here next week. So that was a lot of fun. And just uh, being on the shows and talking to the wonderful community, which is our community as well. And I am preparing our Linux Chicks LA booth and our Linux Gamecast, yay, gathering and festivities and interviews at Scale 18X. So we've been heavily planning that. So. Glitter. Yes. <laughs> oh, tons, yeah. Tons of glitter. Tons. <laughs> it's going to look like an art supply store vomited on cardboard. It's going to be brilliant. Oh, it's going to be so the awesome. Page, they let you back in. They did, yeah. which was uh, surprising. Well, it wasn't. It, Apparently Brexit just got delayed again, so there's that. Mm. Uh, the yeah, basically ever since I got back, uh, thanks to um, well, mostly thanks to our Theron, I've been uh, very busy getting the Steambox 360 V2 ready to go. Mm. It's just waiting for a power supply now. You can see that Yay. Noctua fan used to be, um, you know, the Noctua a colors, uh, brown color, and beige. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now it's black. Uh, and yes. uh, you, 
what you see at the top there is a uh, low profile 1650 which was uh that and the um the riser that is connected to were a uh, big courtesy of uh, arthur and so thank you very much for that but yeah they, it, i've been uh, busy <laughs> yes <laughs> let's start with linux laptops <laughs> yeah might as well yeah. and this one this is a chalky boy well not really but it is very very powerful and Ooh, uh talking it's earlier, man i mean considering the size of it it's not terribly yeah uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, actually if you look at it it looks very familiar but this is not an introware kratos no 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 this is the kubuntu focus it's actually being developed uh in conjunction with tuxedo computers uh, uh canonical kubuntu um basically the single most powerful laptop out there that comes with Kubuntu pre-installed. And that's a claim I am very comfortable making, mostly because there aren't many uh, laptops out there that come with Kubuntu pre-installed. So there's that. Mm -hmm. That's uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, and while we were uh, still setting up, I had a look through my Geekbench results. And as it turns out, those uh, Geekbench 4 and 5 scores are very similar to the i7-5820K that's currently in El Cheapo in a much, much smaller um, uh, energy package because it's mm. laptop CPU, so it's always going to be far more efficient. But yeah, it performs very well for the, the power that it's drawing. And of course, it's got a uh, chunky, chunky GPU, which, well, you are going to be running KDE, so you well, kind of need it's it. Definitely a thing. What is this yeah. thing rocking? <laughs> i seven ninety seven fifty options mm -hmm. for the G Force, full HD sixteen point one matte. That's important. IPS one hundred and forty four hertz ten eighty p screen, uh, display ports USB C HDMI two, and we do need to take a look at those configuration options. This is what you're going to yeah. do. This was um, okay. Nice. Uh, prepare yourself. Uh, you don't want to throw it away. You can yeah. configure the RAM between 32 and 64. The graphics cards between 2060, 27, hmm, and a 2080. The warranty mm -hmm. between just two years and that, and that's it. Yeah, no, not a lot of options there. Yeah. Mm. No. <laughs> and that price, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what I found inter interesting is because they're they're so focused on the workflow of the computer and the, you know, it, end user, whether it be for multimedia, uh, playing um, games, and um, just general workflow with coding and uh, um, doing kernel development. And, you know, because of the workflow is such a huge focus, quote, of the Ubuntu focus, the terminal command RM, for instance, is remapped to trash to help avoid accidental data loss. I found that very, very interesting. It was actually very thoughtful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clearly yeah. they are putting in some work for people to, you know, target regular people, not just yeah. Linux nerds. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Let's be honest, though. I mean, this, this is a laptop for Linux. You know, you, you know what you're doing. And oh, it's yeah. always good. We've said multiple mm -hmm. times. I mean, System76, they make great pieces of kit, but options are mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah. More, you can get this free shipping in Canada or the States. And there's an option. I think you have to order it through Tuxedo Computers. Is that correct? If you're in the EU. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so that is a thing. Not the only piece of hardware. We get to talk about this week because uh -huh. the fine, fine pine farm, Braveheart, <laughs> has started shipping. What can you expect? It's pretty cool, man. Uh, we've mentioned this a billion times on the show, but $149.99, I'm probably going to end up getting one of these, man. This is from OMG Ubuntu.co.uk, all this in the show notes, but they are out. You can put them in your hands. Now, personally, I'm violently against carrying a mobile device. And phone form factor, give me a big tablet that I can use, I can do stuff in. This is going to support all major Linux distributions, such as, uh, well, phone distributions, let's go ahead and say that. Um, mm -hmm. Ubuntu Touch, <laughs> Sailfish OS, Plasma Mobile. Out of the box, you're going to be looking at 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, two cameras, Yay. and a USB-C port. Now, something that I don't see brought up as often, because I know a lot of people were interested with this about... <clears throat> 
being um, a privacy device simply because you can take mm -hmm. the back blade off and it's got road tip switches on the back that you can flip to disable, you know, just straight up murder your GPS or if you don't want the Wi-Fi's or Bluetooth's or the microphones or the cameras. You know. Dun, dun, dun. And then you can give it to your friend. Maybe just disable one. <laughs> <laughs> so they hate you even more because you're a yeah. horrible person. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you know uh, they say that the general uh availability uh for the sort of kind of final um design of the phone will be in march and it will start shipping in april so mm -hmm. i'm gonna wait until the final one is out and then i might very well pick it up but um you shared it on twitter uh last night ven mm -hmm. and it was running xfc oh yeah i'm not, not we might even be able yes. to take a, <laughs> take a yeah. of this. <laughs> Using a play. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do we have audio? Uh, yep, there it is. Yeah, uh, yeah. This beast. Yeah, uh, yes. Juggernaut. <laughs> Elsa <Look> mix Mixer. <laughs> <laughs> the Elsa Mixer. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm gonna cut that down though, because tinny as that yeah. may be, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty cool, man. It, 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 this this is not necessarily just because it's XFC, but I we've all wanted a little device like this. The only thing I'm worried yes. about, yes, I'm, I'm not even worried about it. 149 bucks, even if you save up for a little bit, that's in the thing of like I'm going to be perfectly okay getting this, playing with it for a day or two, then like here you have this. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I actually, I actually want one, and I actually want one for my Steve husband in chat. I think he would love this phone because it's cheaper and... than a jitterbug. You were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, <laughs> he's not there Jitterbugs. yet. Yep. Oh, yep. Yet. <laughs> oh no. But but uh, and uh, speaking of WebOS, I really was really happy to hear that the. Um, Web OS, which is my favorite phone OS, Loon OS, um, which I also have on my OnePlus One, is also being ported to the Pine phone, um, as well as the Android-based replicant OS. So, and and that's what's cool on my Pi on my um, OnePlus One. I have all these distros, so it's it's really nice to have a phone that that's coming out that will support all these distros out of the box <laughs> it's just awesome that's made to support those distros out of the box exactly <laughs> exactly, exactly. I and i can yeah i can <laughs> I run window maker on it if i want <laughs> you can i mean that that's 100 percent that experience of like i can do this it's wholly impractical but look it's kind of neat yeah mainly to put sailfish os on there so i can be the other person that listens to our shows <laughs> <laughs> there are now seven sailfish users in the world <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> okay uh let's get we're gonna talk about wine normally when we talk about wine we talk about gaming but uh this is the non-gaming version of the yes. wine 5.9 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and uh this is the stable version this is the boring version the one that people only install when it's brand new like you know right now uh and uh arthur had actually submitted this as a suggestion for a story so thank you very much um yeah this is the stable version it's up to 5.0 and if you've been tracking the Steam, uh, not Steam, uh, the Wine HQ um, <laughs> repo, you actually are already running the 5.0s, mostly because you've been running the RCs all the way up to now. Uh, but yes, it includes all the updates that were rolled into the 4. Whatevs um, releases. Uh, it supports Vulcan 1.1, which is good because 1.2 nice. just came out. So. That's kind of necessary. Uh, yeah. There's been <laughs> lots of care that was uh, put into compiling wine with um, portable executables, basically making sure all the DLLs and all the EXEs are, show up as portable executables instead of ELFs, like the previous ones did, because that'll help with copy protection. There's been a lot of copy protection woes um, over the years uh, with the use of wine. So hopefully this will uh, improve on it, which may or may not have stemmed from Valve's work with Proton. Go figure. 
<laughs> yeah, and you know, I was really happy that now they officially have multi-monitor support in Wine 5.0. That, yay! Because for years I've been, you know, having to do workarounds to get my uh, to to everything from run my um, applications on three monitors and bit like video editors to uh, games. So now it's just going to make that much more easy instead instead of having to spend hours tweaking it. To get it to work. <laughs> the important question we have to ask with this 5.0 release is will I finally be able to run all the Adobe products that I've never run in my entire life, but I'm going to tell you on the internet that I absolutely must be able to before I install Linux. Well, um, Photoshop's been kind of a thing. No, 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 I can't do it yeah. Even though I've never used them, Adobe. Nope, I can't use Linux. Sorry, Pedro. <laughs> I mean, uh, Photoshop works, Illustrator works. After Effects. Uh, I don't Premier know about anything fine. else. I, I know about those two because those are the two ones that Nori uh, cares yeah. about. So. Well, yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. But now, now that that works, I, I'm gonna, I got to wait for a native port. And yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's my new story. <laughs> okay. You know who you are. Sent uh, us. Yes. <laughs> yes. So uh, the CentOS blog has a bit of an update. Uh, they have um, put out an update uh, about the state of uh, CentOS Linux 8 and CentOS Stream. And at first it's like, CentOS Stream, what the heck is that? Mm -hmm. So I had a look, it's like, oh, it's a rolling release distro. But yeah. like in terms of package up-to-dateness, it stands somewhere between Cent and Fedora. And I think I kind of like that idea, but the the blog itself is because they had a lot of retooling to do from the move from the base of uh, RHL seven to RHL eight. So they're done with that tooling now. So once uh, eight point one is released, the move to eight point two and you know future work after that will be much smoother than it was up to this point, which is great to hear. Uh, and yes, I. All of a sudden, I was very, very curious about uh, CentOS Dream. Hmm. Yeah, that that was so cool. And I was really, um, what was really nice, they talked about how their transparency of workflow and giving the community a breakdown um, of their progress is now the CentOS team's commitment going forward. And that's very good because otherwise you don't think anything's going on with the project, like kind of what happened with the, the GIMP in the stable branch. Um, a lot was going on in the unstable, but not the stable. So it, it's really good to see this. <laughs> yep. That is very good. It's always good to get updates because CentOS mm -hmm. is definitely one of those projects like... Um, that no one thinks about how important it is until something blinks with it. Yeah. <laughs> then the world is. It was like, we're wholly reliant on this technology. It's like, kick him a few bucks when you think about it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Humbunto has Whoa. done something. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. So this is, this is huge. Yeah, most people aren't really going to care. Is it? <laughs> Too much. <laughs> no, huge? it isn't. It isn't. <laughs> I'm just teasing. So the Amazon Web App, which was first introduced in Ubuntu 12.10 and has been a part of the Ubuntu desktop for the past eight years, has been removed. Thanks to Canonical's Alan Popey and the Ubuntu desktop director, Martin Wimpress. Yay! Thank you, Popey and Wimpy. Uh, yeah, when because <laughs> it's something no one used. And, you know, this is going to be, uh, you're going to notice it in Canonical's upcoming Ubuntu 20.04 LTS release, which lands in April. And, you know, this icon really has been mostly used as an uh, Amazon affiliate link for Canonical. And, you know, personally, I, I literally haven't used the Amazon Web Launcher since the Unity days with Ubuntu 14.04, and then, yep. then maybe just twice. <laughs> so for those of you who will miss this, those few people who missed it, this, just save a shortcut of the web page to your desktop with any browser, and you can go and donate to Canonical via PayPal with uh, the link I have in the show notes. <laughs> so that's that's how you can solve that problem. <laughs> I, I, for one, am just happy that I can drop one of the packages for my initial um, sudo app yeah. remove whenever I do a fresh Ubuntu install. I mean, I still do sudo app remove apport star um, 
snap star, but I can remove the Ubuntu web launchers now, so that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty cool, man. I mean, the only problem I ever had with the Amazon bit uh, with that install is, of course, the internet being the internet and then lost its mind when like, oh my God, you're trying to finance yourselves without showing us advertisements directly. And I had the Amazon search. I'm like, hey man, people got to make money. I understand that. The search lens was a bit... <sighs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and which led to, you know, the only thing I think anyone had an issue with, uh, me personally, I speak on the, you know, the... Um, Kingdom of Vin was it wasn't opt in. Yeah. yeah. It was on mm -hmm. by default. <laughs> it was on by yeah. default and it was a bit of a pain to rip out of the system. It wasn't like just uninstall yes. this. It's like, no, you uninstall that, then make sure you uninstall this and have yourself a little bit over here and go in and uninstall that too. Um one of the reasons I, I like moved everything as so Pedro. We've definitely talked about this here in the studio, except for Jackbox. That's still running 1804. I recommend that. Um to Debian was the need to de Ubuntu something mm -hmm. after you yeah. had set it up. Now, what I'm saying about that is because I'm like, what do you mean? How are you speak ill? Is like most of the stuff that I would note from Orbit makes sense on a workstation because I need work. Everything in here is boring. That's where it doesn't have extra anything in it. And Canonical ships a lot of extra with Ubuntu. I mean, it's kind of heavy out of the box. So that's why, you know, I just rolled back from whence it came, Debian, mm -hmm. which is a lot lighter. But yeah, for, you know, yeah. uh, the average user that just puts this on a laptop, then mm -hmm. yes, all that stuff that comes out of the box helps the laptop work better or helps more hardware work out of the box. So it makes sense in that respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Cool. Sad news. <laughs> Yeah, so this was, yeah. oh, this is our depressing uh, <laughs> news. Uh, <laughs> so Mozilla chair, chairwoman and interim CEO Mitchell Baker announced the company would lay off approximately 70 employees. Uh, so Mozilla had made money from Google and other companies by embedding, embedding their services into the Firefox browser, as a lot of you know. And in 2011, Mozilla j did just that. Um, they made just under 300 million a year by making Google's Fire Firefox's default search engine. So, but these sources of money, of money, unfortunately, are drying up. And you know, it they're 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 trying to um, with all their new wonderful security features and their. They're with their upcoming Firefox private network. They're going to try and make revenue that way, and and I hope they do uh, because we really need to see Firefox. We need that competitor to Chrome and uh, Chromium. So and you know I actually am asking everyone if you can to donate to Mozilla. Um, I do every year via PayPal and help them out because I'm seeing that, you know, their numbers are decreasing in usage on Firefox. And it shouldn't be because it is one of the best browsers out there and they've really come a long way. And it's it's just so sad to see this. <laughs> they, this is, I think the, one of the point of this is refocusing on the core product, which is the browser. Yeah, yeah. Which, is, which is a good thing. Yeah. Which, like, you know, hey, man, uh, we were trying a bunch of different things. We had a bunch of people to help out with those things. And we're going to, you know, focus back on what we're really, really good at. It's delivering a browser. And, you know, these things happen. And you do have to downsize when you laser beam with your focus. I really, you know, if we had the time machine, because we are living, there's definitely an alternate universe before where Firefox didn't become a massive, chunky, slow, bloated mess, which it did. Mm -hmm. Which it yeah. did. I love Firefox as much as the next person, but the reason Chrome was able to walk in, even on Windows, Firefox had the market share, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was still, Chrome was able to walk in because they're like, look, we're lightweight and we run stuff. And it did compared to what, what version was that? The 3X series of Firefox? 
Yeah. Yeah, the three X were slow. Mm. It was around the time that the netbooks came into being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like you ran Chrome or any of the other Chromium based ones that kind of popped up around it uh, on one of those Atom um, single core processors. It's like, yeah, this runs good. You try to run Firefox. <laughs> but yeah, we were dealing with was... single core CPUs at the time. But now, yeah. you know, with the, you know, the quantum series, and stuff, I mean, it's a fantastic browser and we do need options. Yeah. B because everything we else do. it's either going yes. to be Firefox or Chromium or yeah. Chromium based or just regular Chrome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vivaldi is um, Blink based. Uh, Edge is Blink yeah. based. Opera is <laughs> Blink based. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need that competitor. And I was sad, you know, when when they started focusing on Firefox OS. Speaking of cell phones that kind of drew their focus away from the browser. So it's it's good to actually have them just focus on the browser. <laughs> yep. So very good. It's going to be a thing. And it's, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. if you have a company that's uh, currently looking for a bunch of very talented developers, mm -hmm. well, I know of about 70 of them that could use yes. a job right about now. <laughs> Do you hear that, Microsoft? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not even joking. You know you need it's a them. paycheck. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I can help you. Yes. Last but not mm. least, before we get on with the main section, is I have a little something for my Ooh. fellow creator brothers and sisters out there. Yes. People who like to make stuff and put it online. Well, seriously, I like to go on podcasting on Linux. So this is going to be covering something that which I will demonstrate in the video if you want to go watch it. Multi-track recording with OBS. And it's like, well, fine, I do mm -hmm. that. I got my audio coming in. Then I get, it's like, now this is going to record your audio, your vocals separate from your music. Or if you have two vocals, you can do a vocal A, vocal B, because we can skip forward. This is what you're going to end up with. You're going to be able to go back and edit it in post. Mm -hmm. And this is very important, especially like the one time there's a great demonstration in this video of how this can save you. And if it does that one time, it's all worth it. But like if you're doing game capture or anything like that, you might have the game audio too low or you might be too loud. You, this is your time machine. This is very important. Now, you don't need anything fancy with this because I'm, I'm assuming I'm trying to do these. It is a little bit difficult in here to do that, but to simulate a what you would have at home, which I would assume a USB mic and a sound card, external sound card. So if you have those two things currently, you can follow this, get this set up and go forth and make awesome stuff because I couldn't find a serviceable guide for doing this on Linux. So as is tradition. Yes. Past seven, Had to make eight, one. <laughs> nine, 10 years. The internet now has one. It's quick. Yay. It's dirty. It's to the point. I don't spend the first 10 minutes talking about how my day went because I hate videos like that. <laughs> we get right into it. And get right into it. So uh, I think I'm next. Up next in this series is probably going to be dealing with some hardware, actually setting up proper mix minus channels and maybe mm -hmm. setting up interfaces, all that fun stuff. I got to get an additional camera. That's going to be an expense and that's kind of pushed down until I get a capture, a new capture system. So but it is in the works. It is in the works. Pedro, I expect to cool. use like 11 of those. <laughs> <laughs> I will use all the ones that uh, I can. <laughs> what do you think, Pedro? Do you just record everything down to one stereo pair? Is that how you roll? Uh, that's how I stream, yes. No, and I, how you when stream, I how you record. This isn't for the only streaming. thing I record. Yeah, the only thing I record is game audio, and that just goes off of one stereo channel, yeah. Have you ever thought about doing what the kids are doing, like um, talking over your game audio? <laughs> but it, it's just footage that you end up using for the reviews. No one's going to be listening to what I'm saying. <laughs> so what I should point out is this will allow you to stream that regular stream that you'd normally do. But if you mm -hmm. were recording a local copy... Not only would you have the video, you would have your audio oh, okay. and your vocals separated from each other in that video container. So if you needed to go back mm -hmm. and tweak them up or anything like mm -hmm. that before you posted them, 
to YouTubes or anything like that. We're, we're talking about stuff Pedro's like, why I don't do any of that? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, you're the uh, production meister, so yeah. <laughs> That's a polite way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> you run the show, literally. Yes. <laughs> that sounds a lot sweeter than that. You do all that work. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> hey, if you would like to support all that work that we do, you can. Uh, if you want, you want to up our relationship, you know, just me, you, Jill, Pedro, maybe Jordan every <laughs> now and then. Uh, get some money in the game. You can do that. Uh, LegacyGamecast.com. We got a support tab. Go over that. We have Patreon. We have Libra Pay if people are into that. We got merch. Hey, if you'd like to wear a shirt, we have those. Uh, do we have anything that's non shirt related? We might have a pillowcase. PayPal. We got wish loans mm -hmm. uh, for the studio. If you pick up anything that we use to add to the production of this show or these series, you end up on the fine upstanding cannibal wall. Yes, that's what it mm -hmm. stands for, you dirty minded human being. On <laughs> 3.0, we have Carl, Mike. And Basil, who's always yeah. like just in that line, man. We yep. Can't quite make it up. Yes. <laughs> but we can work down that. And uh, what else do we have? Uh, Jill, Jordan, Pedro. They have like wish list of like, I want pink things. Mostly Pedro. <laughs> Mostly Pedro. <laughs> yes. Look at all the pink things in my wish list. That said, yeah. though, uh, I do need to read because Arthur, as yes. I mentioned at the top of the show, he gave me the 1650 and the riser. So a uh, bit of a note. Hola, Peter. Have fun with the Steambox 2.0, the horsening. All the worst, <laughs> Artharin. P.S. Say hello to Nori. I did, in fact, say hello Aww. to Nori. She says hello back, Artharin. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much. We love you. <laughs> We love you, Arthur. That was uh, amazing. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> that is fantastic. Thank you, each and every one of you. Oh, also as a mm -hmm. patron, you get that custom RSS feed. If you want the extra stuff, you want to get some stuff. We try to sweeten the deal. We get you a little look. We're not big on putting things behind the paywall. One thing we do put is the pre-pre mm -hmm. super shows, in which is an extra hour of content that we invite people to participate in. That comes out in video and uh, audio form each and every week. But... Thank you for financing our shenanigans and uh, yep. mm -hmm. let's keep doing some more 2020 because we got a slice oh. of pie coming up. Oh, but we also Ooh. have a new patron to thank. Well, Jill, <laughs> I thought you were going to get to it, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it, this person goes by the name Raspberry, but I wonder if it's a Frosty or a Frostclaw Raspberry. I, I don't know. <laughs> He's he uh, Frosty's a returning patron. And Frosty's so. Frosty patron. <laughs> yeah. But okay, so this You're is someone else. I'm just gonna assign people different names. Jill doesn't <laughs> care, man. Like, How do you make up a name for it? You don't want to know what she calls Pedro. Aww. <laughs> what? <laughs> My friend Pedro. <laughs> that, that that's not what you said to me, man. Um <laughs> Now that Pedro is back, be it all nice about it. But yes, Raspberry is our latest patron. Thank you. Thank you, Raspberry. Yes, thank, thank you so you much. Very much. By the way, if you haven't put two and 13 together, we, we'll, we'll give you a little shout out on the show. <laughs> yes. Also, like, up your pledge. Make it I don't have, do I have Penguin Raid on this one? No, I don't. Oh, uh, boo. Now, now let's get into an additional slice of pie. That's what it says. It says slice of pie. I oh, oh, that's even more clever. I like that. Oh. I just realized that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> very so good, Ben. <laughs> Fakeness. So, this is interesting. Uh, people have found fake raspberry pie cases online that are Can badly you tell molded. Because when you put them down, they just start rotating. Like, oh, yes, yes. Start <laughs> if they levitate like that, they're fake. <laughs> and, and these are uh, badly molded knockoffs uh, to the originals um, uh, the original white and raspberry uh, pink case and these of course violate the raspberry pi foundation's trademarks and they're just they're horribly done um they're you know <laughs> the, <laughs> the the moldings are are too big um they're not you know uh they're not smoothed out nicely um the colors are off <laughs> they're just they're just all wrong <laughs> definitely and uh and, yeah, yeah that bit about asking the ask uh, asking the experts it's like you're straight up just telling the knockoff artists how to make a better knockoff what are you doing <laughs> i don't know man um i'm thinking about like I, they're not necessarily showing everybody how to make a better knockoff there's like this is what it would cost mm -hmm. to do it 
right. And I don't think people making knockoff products are necessarily concerned about doing it right. They're about doing it cheap. Yeah. <laughs> right? But they they have like the uh the mill cutters for making the really fine detail that those cases have. And it's like, yeah, if you have the sharp um with uh, the sharp cuts with the rounded um burrs at the end, uh it looks much nicer. And if you have just a cylindrical um uh electrodes with sharp corners, then it doesn't look as good. So yeah, it's like, oh, so you just told them how to get better tooling for pretty cheap. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> and, you know, this is also not good because the Raspberry Pi Foundation is a nonprofit that supports their work in education. And this is costing them lots of money that would be used to fund their charitable work. So, I mean, this is hor horrific, actually. It's I, horrible. I'm going, to, <laughs> I'm going to save us that email. The Raspberry Pi, well, actually, Jill, um, <laughs> The <laughs> Raspberry Pi Foundation is a not for profit, mm -hmm. not a non profit. Not, oh, oh, yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just saving you that email, man. Okay. You want to, yes. You got to understand because some people really, really, really will do that. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. What else do we have? Well, mm -hmm. uh, I suppose we have the one last bit of a uh, Pi story, someone who's actually. Um, posted their story on Reddit about how they built a little uh, greenhouse on top of a massive little uh, water tank. They buried the water tank and then they built the greenhouse on top. And then they put some koi fish to help uh, fertilize the, um, the plants in the greenhouse in said water tank. But they wanted a way to be able to monitor the little fishies. Somebody and took they, the cover off a C9... 920. A, possibly, yeah. ish. Large well, tech, you did it to yourself. <laughs> Everything's a C920 now. I mean, that looks yeah. like a C920. <laughs> uh, and judging by the uh, quality of the pictures that he took of it uh, being underwater, yeah, it, it looks very much like a C920. Um, it's, yeah, it's a very ingenious way to basically make a watertight uh, enclosure for a camera that you can put in an aquarium. And then you can take pictures of the little fishies. Um, I uh, This is a personal thing. I would have liked either a higher resolution camera, because, yeah, 1920 by 1080 is fine, but something a bit higher. Uh, or, if you're going to go with 1080p, get a wide-angle camera, so you could put it right there in the corner and you could see the whole aquarium. That would have been yeah. even better. That could have been interesting, but, I mean, I, I want... Like... I, I don't know, like um, autonomous um, sub, like a little AI powered uh, neural <laughs> learning tartar cell spot. It just goes around. Th this is why I don't own animals. It's for their own good. Just get the, the Roomba brains in a Raspberry Pi and make a sub that once it bumps into the wall, it turns uh, around. It's too much work. I'm just going to toss my Roomba into the aquarium, see what happens. It'll work itself out. <laughs> Zap all the koi. <laughs> oh, poor koi fish. <laughs> Dude, um, that, that's interesting. I always like seeing, like, okay, let's just tear stuff apart and make a new thing. And underwater yeah. cases, <laughs> oh, ridiculous. Uh, my buddy, Dr. John, is he's into underwater photography, and I was over at his house. And the dude makes okay money. He's a college professor, university professor. And I was like, oh, he showed me his DSLR, then he showed me his big transparent case for it. And he's like, how much do you think that costs? And I was like, 50 bucks. I mean, it's plexiglass. When I looked at it, I was like, I could make that in an afternoon. It was like, that's a little over two grand. Okay, I wouldn't yeah. have said that much, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... I would have gone for 200. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. So, maybe you like dipping stuff underwater yourself and you won't tell us about it. How can they do that? Best way to tell us about it is by using the contact form. Where's the contact form? It's on LinuxGameCast.com. Can't read. Nope. YouTube.com. Yeah. That's where it's at. It's very <laughs> difficult. But yeah, if you go to LinuxGameCast.com, there's a contact button. There's a form there. Make sure you pick LWDW on the um, mm -hmm. the box that shows up at the top. Fill out the rest. Send us your message. Send us your pie projects. Send us some really awesome uh, pictures of koi fish. <laughs> for some reason uh but you can you totally yeah. absolutely can or you can give us some feedback 
tell us um, what it is that you enjoy about the show, what it is that you don't enjoy about the show. Seriously, let us know. Uh-huh. Uh, or you can do like Orn did, uh, which is, uh, well, uh, you guys were talking about the um, Windows mm-hmm. 7... Um, Windows Basically, 7 people, refugees. Yeah, the refugees. Like, yeah, refugees. Yeah, refugees. That's the word. <laughs> Statistical inaccuracy of somebody running Windows 7 and going, oh no, my license and support is up. Oh, let me go download a Linux ISO, put that on my thumb yeah. drive, format everything, move my data files over because I clearly have a backup because I'm still running Windows 7. Um, install <laughs> Linux, set up everything. Yeah, okay, maybe not. Pedro, read it for me. <laughs> yeah, so Oren says, easy, easy. Ah. <clears throat> Take two. Easy to use desktops are incredibly subjective and no. Users, especially Windows users, are not used to different desktop environments. <laughs> uh, people who are used to a Windows environment will not be all comf- uh, at all comfortable using GNOME, Pantheon, or even Budgie. And no, not any modern mm. Linux distribution will be perfect. You wouldn't make Windows users... Uh, bad use of the plural there. Uh, use Sabion, would you? Unless you <laughs> hate them, that is. Uh, and... Windows 7 users migrating to Linux is more or less a pipe dream, just like during the early Windows 8 or even Vista years. There will be some who will make the transition, but for the most part, they'll stay within the Windows ecosystem, as these are the same users, as Van put it. Um, we'll keep using it till it becomes woefully unsupported by software vendors like the Windows XP users before them. Yup. <laughs> yeah <laughs> most people don't care what they're running on their computer yeah as long as there's a browser there for them to click on <laughs> as long as they so, can go on the internet and watch yeah. their cat videos or read their emails or do whatever it is that they do they don't care yeah this, this is and, one of the more unfortunate yeah and i was actually talking about what i was meant by different interfaces Orn is mobile it, it's you know uh, tablets phones the internet of things um uh, people are used to using other devices now so they're it's it's a little easier now to move them over to um, um linux but yeah the majority of them are not but <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's just easier <laughs> well, then, the, the concept of a, a... I know. Listen, you're listening to a Linux podcast, and yeah, <laughs> we're in a bubble. Okay, yeah, yeah, we, we're in our <laughs> bubble, which is a small fraction of a still very niche bubble. People who still own desktop computers. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, exactly. I had to dose somebody exactly. with this, and we had to go to the Google <laughs> because they were, they were talking like PC gaming, and I was like, you understand. You understand, uh, PC game is a fractional minority compared to consoles. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Uh, mm-hmm. Laptops. Mm-hmm. You ask someone, it's like, so you have a computer? Yeah. Which laptop is it? Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it, well that, that's if you're lucky. We're talking about people that you know, that are your friends and part of your family. Like, no, everyone I know. It's like, mm-hmm. that, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the thing. You do have to keep that in mind. And that person, they're, they're going to be on a touch device. It's going to be mobile. Ten years from now, the concept of... Yes. Like, that's ridiculous. Uh, no. They're, they're, uh, yes. <laughs> this will probably be here. But that's going to be in specialized yes. <laughs> use cases yeah. like video editing, 3D, stuff that has, has yet to be moved over to, you know, more portable devices. Of the cloud. The cloud as much as the man. term kind yeah. of irritates me but uh, yes. yeah it, that's where everything is going whether we like it or not we let google get yeah. to where they are we let microsoft get to where they are we let apple get to where they are so there they are mm. that's yeah. it listen man cloud yeah. gaming is the future yes <laughs> and you know so many Apple's of our doing young... it apple is yeah. doing cloud gaming mm-hmm. Yes, and our young generation <laughs> is growing up with Chromebooks, so it, that's a thing. All the school districts have Chromebooks now. So Chromebooks, Android phones, iPhones, exactly, yeah. iOS, all of it. Touch device. All right, beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out with us, man. Uh, yeah, we're out of here. But before that, we're gonna roll some credits soon as I've, um, maybe I can get yes. some music on. Yes. 
Woo. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Bye bye. It's sound. Click. Yeah. Aww. Thank you to all our beautiful <laughs> executive producers. It's and very producers. Love ghost. I am. <laughs> and and we had a bit of fire today. That was uh, that was a thing. We had some technical issues today. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, none of it was recorded. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it will forever live uh, in the ether noodles of Twitch. Well, yes. till the end of the month, anyway. <laughs> oh, no, I highlight my code except, stuff now. Except on my it. end, where I missed a bit. <laughs> so... <laughs> 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 Bye, everyone. Yeah, the fake pie segment, uh, my video went out. <laughs> so I was like lost when I came back in. Okay, where are you guys at? <laughs> so, Pedro, I'm glad you were talking about the, the molding and everything. <laughs> it worked out because I got Pedro talking about that before I rebooted your... Um, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Good. I saw a vent moving a cursor. Yeah. It's like, oh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> Good. And then the audio, of course, went all wonky, so I had to turn down things. Ah. <laughs> it all worked out, though. <laughs> it works out. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> uh spam calls yeah um don't get it was those. a couple of months ago someone figured mm -hmm. out my uh work phone number and realized that i was um uh, the one who did the ordering for the it stuff oh for, you're, uh, you started getting b2b calls didn't you yeah uh, like, like a lot of them I'm from <laughs> Blink Company, calling on behalf of Blink Company, and we'd like mm -hmm. to tell you about our new promotional <laughs> stuff. And so, uh, at first, I was like, so, "No, sorry, not interested." And then I started it's like, "Where did you get my number?" Click. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shit, dude, that, that's like a real thing, but um. The only numbers I, I've given out probably for the last, coming up on a decade, or my Grand Central and now Google Voice numbers. Like, if you asked me mm -hmm. what my mobile, I, man, die in a fire. I do have no idea what the original number is. Yeah, I have I, my I two personal mine. phones memorized. <laughs> <laughs> the English number mm -hmm. and the uh, Portuguese number. I know those two off the top of my head. <laughs> My work number, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> the one good thing about Google Voice is it hasn't always done it, but it does a good job at filtering out robocalls, spam numbers, and stuff like that, just because it's got such a large data set to work from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, and uh, this was a uh, Nori's sister Christmas gift to me. What is it? Is it pants? No. Uh, it's Christ the... Um, <laughs> it's the Hellboy uh, hand. Okay. Oh, neat. Flipping the bird, saying go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. So, uh... Thank you very much, Laura. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice. That's very cool. <laughs> and yeah, that that Hellboy movie. I rewatched it again. It's not oh, bad. It's not I horrible. Love it. <laughs> Actually, speaking of that, I I just recently rewatched it, and I, I love that movie. Yeah, it, it came out on no. Netflix. It's like, oh yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll never make a sequel to it, but mm. probably no. They won't, dude. I think they made like six bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mir, go to In and Out of those. <laughs> I don't know. Learn to 
cook. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, yeah, there was nothing terribly wrong with. But you and get a as it turns out, um, the um, Stranger Things sheriff dude mm -hmm. does an all right Hellboy. <laughs> oh it, yeah, huh? That's right. Worked out. <laughs> I mean, of course, the internet is like, oh no, Del Toro, that's, that's, that's the only version. <laughs> I, I just thought it was going to be miserably bad. No, it's, a, it's a fun movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like for a B action movie with some funny bits, and the whole movie, you just get this feeling that they don't take themselves all that seriously at all. It's like, yeah, 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 I'm okay with this. I'm oh, absolutely no. okay with this. <laughs> it's got its problems, but still, I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> you can't hate it. I mean, you can't hate it. Trust me, I've read the internet. Um, like the Knights of the Round Table uh, <laughs> trying to uh, kill Hellboy, mm -hmm. and then the giants show up. <laughs> well, I mean... Of course there is, Scott. <laughs> I mean, it's Canada. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you have the biggest elks. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> Say that again. I've actually had Say elk. Say that again and Alaska's going to come down there and slap you, Pedro. <laughs> Aren't they the same? <laughs> yeah, Canada, Alaska, same country. No, I'm talking about the elks that wander in Canada and wander in Alaska. No, 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 dude. Oh, the ones in Alaska can fly. Um, <laughs> they're also vampiric in nature. Ah, yes. <laughs> the carnivorous elk. <laughs> Terribly. I mean, according to the thing I watched in Discovery, they are. Anyway. <laughs> Hellman's elks. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was sad to hear about Terry Jones. Uh, that was... And I guess he hadn't been doing well. He'd been having dementia. I mean, he was mm -hmm. in his late 70s, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. He yeah. lived a long time. For, yeah. 77, I think it was. He was... I mean, when you think about it... Uh... Uh, Monty Python and the Quest for the Holy Grail was how many years ago? <laughs> yeah. 40? <laughs> uh, uh, yep, I remember seeing it as the, uh, 30 something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Things roll by like that. Boondock Saints came out 20 years ago yesterday. Mm hmm. This is 2020. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you hear um, Elrond? Elrod mm -hmm. is um, not going to be in the new Matrix. Are yeah. they just not going to have an Agent Smith? Well, they asked. He was in an interview, and they were like, "Well, we were trying to work out a time, and it just wouldn't happen." You know, he was covering like why the Red Skull wasn't in like the Avengers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like scheduling just didn't work out, and they're like, "Oh, that's so sad." And they're like, "Yeah, we couldn't work out the uh, time schedule." For him to be in Matrix 2. <laughs> the actual Matrix 2. <laughs> Which to me... It's like, yeah, that's, that's called um, salary negotiation. That's all that mm -hmm. it was. <laughs> yes, time schedule. <laughs> yeah. See, my time is worth about... I'd say six figures, seven figures. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a big difference. We're like, hey, would you come out and help me do a thing? And like, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> Followed by, hey, look, you're six grand. I'm like, that'll get me on a plane. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything yes, when I so get So the plane there. ticket's taken right. care of. Right. Other than what? <laughs> I'll show up at your installation. <laughs> I'll go to your office and discuss further if that's what you want. <laughs> yeah, Boondog Saints was a good movie. The sequel was alright. It was as good as it could be. 
Oh, I I just um, I'm still still have to watch the last twenty minutes, but the anime Penguin Highway. I'm finally getting around to watching it because someone gifted me the Blu-ray. So I'm. It's been really fun. It's such a cute movie. Mira, I think that was one of the ones you recommended me to see. Penguin Highway. It's very fun. The the animation and visuals are just incredible on that. I love that animation studio. But it's it's magical. It's really cool. It's got uh, this girl has penguin powers. So my friend is that Studio Ghibli. It it isn't. But some of the people that worked at Studio Ghibli worked on it. Because <laughs> yeah, the character design looks very Studio. It Ghibli. is. It's it's very <laughs> based off of that. Yeah. It's. Yeah. I'm, I'm forgetting the name of the studio. Uh, I can't remember it. But um. Yeah, it's not Studio, Studio Colorado. Colorado, yeah, and uh, a lot of Colorado. a lot of the people, yeah, and there's a lot of people at that studio who are a part of Studio Ghibli. Ah, Kate Yano. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's why the characters look familiar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a really beautiful movie, and. My friend Sean got it for me because he said I had penguin powers. So the the girl has penguin powers in this movie. <laughs> she can she can make penguins all of a sudden appear. Eat fish and waddle. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I do <laughs> like fish, but <laughs> I don't waddle. <laughs> oh, I waddle sometimes. I'll get out of bed and I'll realize, oh wait, my legs are numb, so oh, we can't yeah. bend our knees. Waddle, waddle, waddle. 10 by 40, baby. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, there was one time, <laughs> one time that I tried to get out of bed, my legs were numb, and I didn't realize it, so as soon as I tried uh, to take a step, it's like, worked. slump. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, anything else going on? Do I have any famous last words? Mm -hmm. oh, you do. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, uh, no, I'm sorry. I was I was <laughs> reading chat. <laughs> I was commenting. <laughs> I was gonna comment on uh, Patrick's uh, gif. <laughs> Aww. Oh, those uh, subtitles are in Portuguese. I just noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Artharen. Yeah, that movie, I highly recommend it. It, it, it. It's so fun. The story, it isn't the best story, the most cohesive, but it, it makes up for that in charm, in visuals. So... But I, I still have to watch. The, I'm literally in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Artharen, possibly uh, on the either the 27th or the 28th. So Monday or Tuesday next week, I think. I'll let you know because you're going to have to be on stream with me while I'm setting it up. Because, uh, yes. <laughs> I need to pull your compressor. Um, say some things, Jill, that in your normal volume. I might have told you to get a little too hot. Oh, okay. So people have found fake Raspberry Pi cases online that, that are badly. Just a bit. Okay. Okay, about three percent lower. Come down some more. Okay. Okay, 3% again. <laughs> Keep it going. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, when um, I came back in video, you guys got really, really loud. I had to... Oh, you're probably missing the flags from the URL. Because <laughs> if you just refresh that, it doesn't pick up the flags again. You need to put the full URL back in. Yeah, I did, actually. Huh? It's just that the stream has been acting up. Yeah, I always do that. I always just 
copy it again and paste it back in because it that's an issue. Okay, then. <laughs> Dial it back down. Keep going. Um, I can't go any further the on the Behringer. <laughs> Yeah, it's just... You want me to try exiting and coming back in again? Uh, close your browser and open it back up. Okay. It's auto-gaining on her end. Yeah. But I don't feel <laughs> like having that argument. Um, <laughs> work smarter, not harder, kids. I still like that effect that it does. Somebody went in the wrong room. Do do. There we go. Okay. <laughs> wait for Jitsi to do its thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I done? always recut and paste. Fine. I don't refresh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now you guys are sounding better too. <laughs> Okay. Something to double. It's a good hack, Jill, is with your copy and paste. Yeah. Is to copy it. What are you using? Chrome? Chrome or Chromium. I've used both. Enable the home button. Oh, okay. And then and go back to the home and, well, and then. Enable the home button, set it to open a particular page, and paste that entire. The entirety okay. of that script into that particular page that way when you tap that home button on that browser it'll okay. enter everything perfectly every time okay good idea <laughs> will do All right. so, am i sounding okay now ven or is it yeah now you could probably come up a little bit uh, okay <laughs> not much Okay, so I just came up about probably 5%. We can mm -hmm. work with that. That's usable. Okay. Cool. Let me double check. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice, Pedro, having a preamp in my mic. It's awesome. <laughs> See, uh, if this was Saturday, I'd be making remarks about having... A microphone pointed at your face when it's shaped like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Never even thought that. But that's, yeah. This, I did call it on, on the Saturday show, I did call it a chonky boy. Like, because <laughs> it's something you say all the time. <laughs> And people start laughing. <laughs> it looks like a, um, you call it Big Jim. It is huge. It looks like a yes. shake wing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's the, um, that card, that one specific card from Cards Against Humanity. So what's Nori doing right now? Probably <laughs> watching YouTube. <laughs> Coming back. I'll let her know. <laughs> Goes in a very predictable cycle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Judging by the laughter, yes, she is watching YouTube. Hmm. <laughs> Talking to like maybe watching it on 480p during the show. 
Yeah. I mean, the QoS should be taking care of that, but yeah. <laughs> but you have you have QoS set up on that thing? <laughs> it was set up out of the box. I just saw it was enabled and I left it. Apparently, I need to go and check it. <laughs> what options do you have for like your simple QO configuration? I'll let me access the router router. I'm picking up the way to say things from here. Uh and six eight. Is it zero or one? Zero it is. Hello there, Mr. Router. How'd Hi. you do? <laughs> <laughs> it takes a while. <laughs> we gotta get Pedro a router that comes with its own x86 application to access it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I have MTU size for the gateway, trace route. Well, these are not <laughs> not great. Uh Yeah, there, yeah, no, there's literally a uh, tick box that says uh, quality of service. <laughs> and no idea what it does. No, it's just ticked. It was ticked out of the box. I left it on. <laughs> Why don't you try unticking? <laughs> <laughs> if that's your option B. Yeah. Uh, I need to reboot. Hmm. The router, so it might be a few minutes. Mm. Alright. <laughs> Let's see, apply, change, I'll be right back. Okay, Pedro. <laughs> Nori just found out that he did that. It's like, oh, probably should have. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Aww. Yes. Yep. Yep, you're right, Patrick. Rip Nori's YouTuber. Or Mir. I should say Mir. <laughs> well, you don't want to confuse him? Did he forget his yeah. name, Joe? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's my friend Mir. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, ISP routers. Mm. Usually. Not usually. Almost with 100% consistency. Junk. Yeah. I was I was happy they gave me the business class one, so I was happy about that. <sighs> the... Using... Well, anything company... It's also going to be locked down, too. As mm -hmm. pagers is demonstrated like what are your options yeah. on uh -huh. off <laughs> so let's pull that in everything over here is going reasonably smooth take a look our internals um mm -hmm. That's where we're sitting right now. There's there's the other polar opposite extreme of a one button configuration. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> well, we get to keep eyes on, making sure everything's working. Bon. Yeah, it's uh. You made a noise. What was that about? Oh, I was just opening the the picture in a bigger window so I could see it better. <laughs> Sneaky. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, I go to oh, whenever I go to open original, it's still not big enough for for me to see it, the uh, the text um, when it's captured at high resolutions. <laughs> Do, do, do. There it is. It's a thing with windows and numbers. Yes. Yeah. Strongly suggest no one buying a microtech router. Oh. <laughs> All of the complexity of Cisco gear without doing it exactly or even remote. Well, mm -hmm. with about 60% reproducibility of how you think something should work, then you run into the microtech way of doing something. What is the um, guy from Charter came in? What is that? 311 he's like yeah we use the smaller version of that to deploy wireless at charter mm. and they're not expensive that's the good thing about them the bad thing is is out of the box setups they're a nightmare they have things like um telnet wide open yes it's true yeah when i was on cable i used my own as well so it saved money <laughs> I'm going to be, um, finally, I'm not going to keep this connection, but I'll get charter residential, like whatever they have for like a hundred bucks. And oh, okay. It's a backup. Well, I'll use it as one good thing about this router is you can just bond as many connections as you want. There's no WAN See, port, that's no cool. LAN port. I just, I want those four ports to be bonded to four different ISPs. Done. Yeah, see, that's awesome. That's awesome to be able to do that. <laughs> did you did you tell Nori before you did that? <laughs> God, you remember in the days we, I used to use do Wi-Fi bonding? Oh my gosh! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to uh, bond um, my DSL connections because I had a yes, it's that too. <laughs> one, two, no, I ended up with four. DSL PCI modems and I was uh, able to bond those. And Linux. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's rebooted. It's it rebooted. seems to be working again. <laughs> did you did you tell it me? It takes its sweet time. <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take to come up? Uh, about three minutes. Oh wow. Oh, oh yeah. your whole system. Oh, okay. No, no, not my whole system. Okay. Just, Just the router? router? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, I can, I can reset this box uh, about eight times in that much time. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Wow, that's and a reopen long reopen time. And reopening <laughs> everything again, waiting for Steam to start. Yeah, I can do all of that about eight times. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't think I've ever had one take that long. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, the, the Virgin Hub 3, it's not great. Uh. <laughs> but it was cheap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so that came back mm -hmm. out. We might get in the habit of doing that. Let me see how that holds out. Versus, okay. I, I didn't know you had Moon QoS enabled. <laughs> I've clicked it. Without knowing what it does. Well, I untake it now. No. <laughs> because I got you guys like on your own IPv4 only subnet that you mm -hmm. guys hang out on because I can QoS all the things as opposed to IPv6 um, yeah. UDP traffic. I can get a hold to, but I can when I force everything to IPv4 for these two boxes, which has been holding out. It's a bad type of service quality. <laughs> yes, yeah. that is technically a um, type of service quality. <laughs> well, another issue, like if you're doing a lot of 
Because anytime you're, you're enabling QoS, you're sending stuff across the CPU. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and if you get enough bandwidth to where you're not really going to flood anything, you're just slowing your connection down. You're slowing your connection down. Period. Yeah. <laughs> There's a pro tip from old man Ben. <laughs> Don't enable QoS unless you need it. <laughs> Which very well could have nothing to do with it. <laughs> it is like, you know, it's almost 10 p.m. here now. It is prime time. That's when everyone's home, everyone's using the internet, so... How many people do they put on a um, circuit with a BT or who? Right. It's Virgin. Virgin. Um, a coupon. I'm <laughs> going to guess because there's one fiber cabinet out on the street, so I'm mm -hmm. guessing at least this whole block is um, fiber. And this is the tallest building here. It's only got like four floors. But it's got three apartments per floor. That's relatively cozy. Yes. That's why I have a teeny tiny apartment. <laughs> three apartments per floor is relatively cozy. When I think like a... Yeah, it's small. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I think of uh, an apartment building, I'm thinking of something like 20, 25 apartments per floor. No, this is a tiny building comparatively, yeah. you know... London size, yeah, it's got no, <laughs> but it is, it, yeah, it's a teeny tiny apartment, but it is comfortable. It's yeah. not cramped like some of the places, uh, downtown, like downtown Cambridge is. Mm. Man, yeah, <laughs> I like, I like the cozy. I, I see these places that it's like that's the perfect size. I've always wanted a reasonably sized, like. Studio, you know, mm -hmm. that'd be great. But like, if you find any like loft apartments or anything like that, a for sale, they're ridiculous. But mm -hmm. b, they're cavernous. <laughs> Your QoS options. Oh, directly from front to you. <laughs> you got more than I do. <laughs> Yeah, I know the general consensus about this particular router is that it's not very good. <laughs> Why did they even give you that page? <laughs> <laughs> That's the advanced tab. Wow. Huh. Broadband connection wireless settings. Hmm. Yes, it's better than nothing now, right? <laughs> it's better than a tick box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Traffic shaping tab? I mean, it's if it fits your home network, you can shape the traffic however you like, right? <laughs> well, traffic shaping might give you additional options as opposed to priority. The Q stack priority. With a micro tick, I can put things through Q, but also have the option to fast path or fast track connections, like using the, because mm. it's got two hardware switch chips for offloading, one for each bank. And that's pretty good. Unless you need to go from one bank to the other, then it's got to go across the CPU. Topology, stupid stuff. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's for dinner tonight, Pedro? Have you already fed? Already. Mm. Had dinner. Uh, admittedly, we just took frozen pizza. I put some stuff on it, mm -hmm. put it in the oven. Away we go. That's dinner. <laughs> right. What type of takeout dinner is Steve bringing home tonight? <laughs> I don't have to ask him. I don't. I don't know. It's gonna be a surprise. I guess because yeah, yeah. Well, I'll find out in a bit. I'm gonna get some lunch first. <laughs> Greek salad. Oh yeah, Greek salad. That's <laughs> I have that. 
honestly, like several times a week. <laughs> Only till then. Actually, I have... I have a Caesar salad right now that I can have. <laughs> Caesar salad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are the... I will say the unnecessary complexity of this micro tick is you don't have to disable stuff. You can just uninstall it. It's not there in the operating system anymore because it runs Linux. It runs bare metal Linux. You know, it's not like... Yeah. <laughs> it's remain safe these days. Oh, I, I think it's still yeah, safer that's... than eggs. Just yeah. because uh, eggs seems to vary on a week-to-week -week basis. <laughs> one week, they're great. You should have them every single day. Another week, you should only have at most one egg per week. Here's a crazy theory. Eat a moderate <laughs> and balanced diet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, Arthur, and did you like that? I've always called it seizure salad. It's just a joke uh, instead of Caesar. <laughs> seizure salad. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a salad that intense, but okay. <laughs> that's that's not funny, but I've I've ate a salad one time. I had a really bad heart heart incident when I was eating a salad, but it had nothing to do with the salad. <laughs> you don't have QoS installed on your router. Well, maybe. Normally, you wouldn't like I said. You wouldn't use. I couldn't think of like a regular home use for QoS, and that's like. It's like, yeah, it's neat. Is Hello it and seven? welcome, follow Stan. Mm -hmm. Hi, HCHF. Go ahead, Pedro, give me your guess. Hydrocarbonate, high carb, high F. Poof, let's see. Um... Uh, happy calcium hidden <laughs> French fry. Fiber. Fiber. Uh, I think I'm, fiber. I, I'm a belief dex promise there and say fiber. Yeah. <laughs> fish sticks. I'll also accept fish sticks. <laughs> Crunchy fish sticks. Happy fish sticks. <laughs> Almost uh, right the first time. So high carbs, high. What? Bad. What's the F said for, Folsom? <laughs> Come on. <Yeah. laughs> I think they've shortened that um, even for High just, fat. Yeah, okay. It's gluttonous. Right it's like anything. Just give it to me. Yeah. So, chips, fries, every single everything, day. Everything, <laughs> All carbs, all fat. <laughs> it's omnivore in hard mode, baby. <laughs> so can only play on Nightmare. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey D's is on point. I mean, yeah. Well, I guess salt is more mineral than carb, but... Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you cut on the salt a little bit, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That, that's exactly how it works. <laughs> Quickest way to a weeb's heart, bring him some Mickey D's. <laughs> Listen, not just the weebs, it's basically any kind of person who Pedro's enjoys getting out spending ahead of it. time Pedro's like, Listen, man, I, I would kind of react some real life if you laid down some Mickey D's. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, if you bring me fast food, I'll be happy. <laughs> I'm very, very easy to please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think this is going to do it. I got to make a... Yeah, I think that looks better. Okay. Hopefully it'll hold. We'll find out soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Very right, beautiful people. We're gonna bounce out of here. Thank everyone for showing up and staying late. Yeah, we love you all. <laughs> <laughs>